Welcome back to Backstage Pass. With me is one of the most talented comics on the circuit today, Rich Scheidner. How you doing, Rich? Fine, thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about how you started in your comedy career. I uh, started in Washington, D.C. And uh, uh, just went, in, I went into a, um, actually it was like one of those old folk places, you know? It was like a, a coffee house called the Iguana Coffee mic. House. Yeah. And uh, there were poets, like I followed this mad poet, you know, one of those like, you know, like the mango, we are ripe for the revolution right. type poets. And, uh, and then I, um, I just went there and did the comedy. I just had to do it. I don't know why. I just had to do it. I was sending off material to like National Lampoon and Mad Magazine, and they were just, you know, re returning it unopened. And I had no outlet for the stuff that I wanted to do. A lot, sure. of, a lot of the stuff you do, what we were talking earlier, is uh, different all the time. A lot of the comedians have their, their act, and that's their act for 10 years. And you always have a different act. In fact, the stuff you did for us tonight was uh, complete improv. Oh, that was, it was uniquely tailored for your show. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. He says, you wanted, like, this is like a special manufacturing job, and we just pressed that out of the plant and gave it to you, and that's that. You've got a collector's edition there, one of a kind. Oh, I appreciate it. How do you draw your material? Uh, well, that, that yesterday, uh, uh, Anthony Visick, a friend of mine who's uh, performed with me this week, and we came in and to the condo, and we turned on the television set, and it was a very badly dubbed Italian movie. And uh, we didn't see the beginning, we watched the whole thing, and, and Anthony goes, well, this looks like a Fleeny movie, because you just see lots of women's butts and, <laughs> and boobs flying back and forth, you know? And then uh, it was bizarre characters and all that sort of thing. And in the end, of, they rolled the credits, and it was directed by Federico Fleeny and produced by Dino De Laurentiis. And the whole thing was kind of like what I just uh, did there, you know, love, hate, jealousy, all those themes that they put in, this symbolizes that, you know. A right. bunch of foreign movie stuff you never understand, and, but you sit there going, oh, yes, I catch that, because mm -hmm. everyone wants to look smart. That's right, but in your act, where do you draw your material from? Like everyday life, you know, that's it. I mean, I, and I end up living most of the stuff, and then it you know, you kind of put it in your comedy cooker, and it ferments for a while, and then the anger and frustration turns into... The laughter, you know, you laugh at it. I mean, you know, you get any distance from anything, you can laugh at it. Mm -hmm. You know, the more painful, the more distance you need, you know, but most stuff you can laugh at, your own stupidity, and that's what I end up doing. A lot of comedians are always on. You have a serious side to you as well as a bizarre side. Yeah. Um, who do you try out your material on? On the crowd. You always work it out? Just on the crowd. I, I, I tend to be more and more uh, off. Off stage, you know. I mean, just save it for the stage, you know. I mean, a lot of some comics will come up and they'll go, "Let me try this joke on you, try that on you." And it's like, to me, that we have this uh, illegal spritz thing, you know. We go, uh, illegal mm -hmm. spritz, right? You know, you know, you don't try your jokes out on me or try jokes you've just tried on the crowd to see if I'll find them funny. Just be natural in the conversation. If something comes up funny because we're naturally funny, then uh, you know it's good. Now, you, we were talking about you uh, don't get to meet a lot of the other headliners because you're headlining in the clubs, but yeah. we were talking to Danny Johnson, Bruce Baum, and, and the John Fox is people that I've had on the show. Mm -hmm. um, who do you emulate? Who do you idolize as far as get your, got your push in comedy? Well, early on, I worshipped the shrine of Lenny Bruce, you know, and uh, the people put that down, but I liked what he was doing. I also tried to emulate his lifestyle a little bit too much, too, which got me in some trouble. But uh, that's right. that's turned around. I, lo I love uh, Bill Cosby's humor, uh, George Carlin. I definitely listened to him, you know, when I was in high school. I mean, you know, Carlin, Robert Klein, I like a lot. But I mean, I, I, Robin Williams, you know, I like him now a lot. And Jay Leno, there's a lot of comedians I like now. You're right on the verge of busting loose nationally, you know, where everybody will know who you are. Tell us some of the things that are, you've got going for you in the near future. Um, to do the Tonight Show, um, I do a couple small roles on movies, which uh, that puts me on a verge. <laughs> I don't know. But Beverly Hills Cop 2 and Roxanne and Steve Martin movie. And um, I do a small recurring role on a television show called Married with Children. That's just coming do up things. next you, season? Yeah. It's going to be on uh, the Fox Network in April. Oh, that sounds great. Right. Well, much success for you in the future. Thank you, Joe. Feature or future? Feature and future. Okay. See you later. Thank you.